Greetings viewers, Dora the Explorer here. I've had a couple requests for a video on valve adjustments. This is a valve adjustment on a Honda. Different manufacturers have different ways of going about this, but this is the basic setup for a Honda. Hondas, for the most part, the engines have a solid valve train, which means that you adjust the valves periodically. Normally only when it's noisy or uh, when there's some kind of issue. Uh, it does help the engine run a little bit smoother, uh, get you just that little bit more. Uh, but this is this is more of a fine-tuning thing. It's rarely done as a repair. It's more as a maintenance item. Uh, the valves that do not need to be adjusted are hydraulically actuated. Hydraulically actuated valves don't get adjusted by design. So that's just how those go. Uh, so we will join our program already in progress. You really want this to be as cold as possible. Uh, I'm going to get the valve cover off. When you take these things out, look to see if any of the wires are covered with oil. Could be a sign that the gasket down underneath is having an issue. This particular style of valve cover is an updated version, but the older style where there's flat seals underneath, that's the one to watch out for. That's the one that usually has issues with the leaks, but they changed the design to these long tubes that are more like a Toyota, uh, and it doesn't seem to have that issue anymore. I have seen it, and you can get these tubes out uh, with a pipe wrench. You have to unscrew them from the cylinder head and uh, reseal them. There's no gasket, there's just a sealer that you put in. But I have seen them leak on occasion. I'll be taking the spark plugs out also. Um, really don't recommend champion plugs. In fact, what you'll find, actually this will work. This has your valve lash adjustment on it also. If you need to know what the measurement for the valve clearance is, there it is. Right here it says spark plug type NGK. Uh, they give a nip and denso number too. So NGK or nip and denso should be in this car. There really shouldn't be anything else. Get this guy. Whoops. This will allow the valve train to cool down. It needs to be stone cold when you adjust the valves. Next step is valve adjustment. I can say that in my experience there's two things that make one of these engines run like nobody's business. A new tight timing belt and a good valve adjustment. Between those two things and cleaning the EGR ports and cleaning out the intake valve like I was doing earlier, this thing should run like nobody's business. It should be smooth, should be powerful, everything. It should be a very happy engine. Don't attempt the valve adjustment if you're not comfortable doing it. I'm gonna show you how I do it and I'm gonna do it the best way that I know how. But you can destroy valves if you get these too tight. So in other words, if you get the valves too tight, what's going to happen is the exhaust valve in particular is going to hang open too long and as a result it will overheat. After it gets hot, it starts to crack, if it cracks, a little chip comes out of it and next thing you know you're doing a valve job. Want to do that? Probably not. Get it right, got years of experience behind me here. You maybe not so much, but how are you going to get experience without trying? Well this is the method that I use if you wish to attempt this. I showed you earlier where the sticker is on Hondas and Acuras on where to find the uh, thickness of the feeler gauge that you'll need. I have these ultra long ones. I've gotten used to using these ultra long ones. You can use thinner ones, shorter ones, and ever, whatever. But on this particular vehicle, I use this uh, 25.4 and 3305 feeler gauges. The big, bigger one's always the exhaust, and the other one is the intake. If you take a look at the engine, you'll notice the exhaust valves are in the front, because that's where the exhaust manifold is, and intake valves are in the back, because that's where the intake manifold is. Keep that in mind. Don't get them mixed up. 
they're both very different. Here's how you do it. Okay, first off, the engine needs to be cold. The valves need to be cold. The best time, the very best time to do this is first thing in the morning when this thing is stone cold. That's when these valves get adjusted. Some other vehicles, the valves get adjusted when the engine is hot. This one, no. This one is a cold valve adjustment. Now you need to be able to turn the engine over. I took the spark plugs out earlier so that I could put a wrench on the power steering pump and turn the engine over. The engine will turn over very easily by using this long wrench and just doing this. Now you've got to get whatever valves you're adjusting on the base circle of the camshaft. That means not on the lobe whatsoever but on the base circle which is the back side exactly opposite of where the cam lobe is. So I'm gonna give you a close-up and show you what we're looking for. Alright now we're down inside the nitty-gritty here. What we're looking for, see the camshaft moving? Right there is the cam lobe. Now, you want it to be exactly on the opposite side of the rocker arm. See right there is the cam lobe. It's pushing that thing down, and away you go. What you want is that to be on the exact opposite side of that rocker arm. So there, it's, it's good there. So you want it to be 180 degrees pointed the other way. That means you will have slack at these rocker arms. This is the intake side. Now where you put your feeler gauge is in between the rocker arm and the top of the valve stem. That's where it goes. So directly underneath the rocker arm and just above the valve stem itself. That is where the feeler gauge goes. And you want to pull it through. Now this one is a little bit loose. This one should have a little less looseness to it. So we're gonna tighten it. I have a special tool. I can post the part number. This is a blue point tool um, that is specifically designed for adjusting valves. This knocks the nut loose and this turns the valve itself. It's got a little screwdriver head in there. You can just as easily use the box end of a wrench and a regular screwdriver to do the exact same thing as my special tool. My special tool works a lot better, but this will work just fine. And what you'll find sometimes is they get gunked up. So just knock it loose, work it back and forth with your screwdriver. So now that it's loose, run it down until you see your feeler gauge move. See it moving? So you see it move. And hold it in place. And try to keep it from turning anymore and tighten the lock nut. What I'm looking for is just a little bit of drag. Not a lot, just a little. That's about perfect. So it doesn't slop around, it just pulls out with just a little bit of drag. That means that that thickness is the same as this feeler gauge. And that's what you're looking for. It's an acquired skill. It takes time and practice to do. You may have to do it a few times. Just make sure you do it when it's cold. Make sure you do it when it's on the base circle. And go through all 16 of these things. Because there are 16 of these. You can do three or four valves at once. Personally, I prefer to be like dead on the base circle. If you are familiar with the firing order, then you know which valves are open on which cylinders and which valves are closed on which cylinder. And you can do multiple versions of these at same time. I hope this video was helpful and that you uh, possibly gained some knowledge on how to do this. Once again, this is an acquired skill. It's not something you're probably going to pick up right out of the box, but if you do, you are the man, woman, whatever. Uh, as always, you can visit me at ericthecarguy.com and uh, keep watching my videos and also keep subscribing. And thank you to all my present subscribers. Stay dirty.